Okay, so uh, I didn't want to um, just grind out uh, developing each of these adventure or each of these encounters. So uh, we're going. I kind of like the the cooking shows where they they um, you know have the pre baked thing under under the table. Uh, I went ahead uh, and and fleshed out enough of the other three encounters to present them. So so. Uh, Encounter one, we've got the Babaos um, uh, as a roaming encounter, and then the storm breaks. <coughs> then we really get into the grist of the story in this, <coughs> in, excuse me, in the second one. So uh, the the gist of the the plot is is we have a a renegade, uh, uh, a rogue uh, magic item crafter who wants at least one of the PCs to convert them into a magic item, which is the way Dim Guard does its thing. So first we're going to uh, subvert those who are traveling with the um, with the PCs. So uh, as, as I mentioned before, the PCs maybe are probably going to be on boats, on a boat, but they could be traveling over. So I need so I need to make this uh, this encounter um, um, I need to make it applicable to both. So I'm going to use Bandit Captain, which is just a good, solid, uh, roguish type bad guy. Uh, the encounter um, uh, budget can give me two Bandit Captains per PC. I'm adding some, some cool features that I can include or not include as I want. Um, I've got some Drow Poison. Uh, I've got uh, Candles of Invocation. Uh, for chaotic neutral, which is what our kidnapper is, or what our, our bandit captains are. Uh, one thing that I would point out here is you notice that uh, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and put in some headers. These are things that I'm going to want to watch when I'm when I am DMing this for the first time. Uh, the detecting the candles. There are two candles in play here. There's one that's coated with burnt other fumes, um, which will uh, damage deal damage to the PCs um, because they are they are not the, the PCs who are not immune to poison. If you notice the the bandit captains are immune to poison um, they have a periaps of proof against poison and then there's the candle of invocation. You know, do that as well the PCs might just put out the candles right and then that that, that would be a perfectly valid thing that I would want to occur I just want to soak up a couple of actions to do so um, to at least a couple of actions because they've got to detect it and they've got to uh, they've got to put it out a prop if, yeah so um, then we've got the disease I always like to have a disease diseases were historically the primary killer of people many many more people have died through history through disease than they have to bandits um, all right so presuming that the bandit captains fail next up um, our uh, magic item crafter's agent, Neelik is the magic item. He has entrusted some held horrors to um, to the uh, to the process. Um, and again, the, the, I've added something. These guys have the have carrier crawler mucus, um, which can paralyze a PC on their weapons. They are also immune to poison, so they don't have to worry about the con it gets a contact poison, right? So they don't have to worry about it. And because it's a contact poison, all they have to do is just dip their sword in it, um, just run it across their the, the the bag each time, so it's they can replenish it each turn as if with without having to apply it. Um, and uh, I'm adding in here, if you look right here, a magic item, adamantine armor. Um, if you look at adamantine armor, giving the PCs adamantine armor um, is going to uh, not skew the campaign. It doesn't increase their armor class. It makes them immune to crits, right? And how often are crits that? And really, I'm all right with a PC being immune to crits, right? The the um, I I like to build the story, and I don't like for uh, fringe dice rolls to undermine the plot. The way crits can, um, and actually, I'm going to add a note here. 
Uh, yeah. So this is something that so that I remember when I'm when I'm DMing it. Uh, I'm going to let's see. We'll give it a green background. Um, salvaging adamantine. To remind me that yeah, the they, the PC should be able to salvage enough adamantine here for one suit of armor to be crafted for a PC. Also have traumatic stress here. I like to use print. I don't know how, how often I do it. It seems like about a third of the time I include, include traumatic stress. I am modeling post-traumatic stress syndrome. A lot of times new PCs to my campaign will argue that they shouldn't be, that they're veterans and they shouldn't be subjected to post-traumatic stress. And, and I'll say, well, that's not the way post-traumatic stress works. That that even very, uh, very, very hardened veterans um, eventually reach a breaking point and, and you never know when that's going to be and, and they will succumb to it. So, uh, and then finally we have the actual, um, uh, the actual agent of Neolac. His name is Steel Fang. He's a were rat. Um, so the were rat is a good illustration um, of something that comes up in, in campaigns, right? The were rat has artificially low hit points because it, it has immunity to weapons that aren't silvered or magic. And uh, we're talking about 11th level PCs. Um, in a lots and lots of games, every PC would have magic weapons by this point. And I did that in my first couple of campaigns until I began to realize how hard that is to adjust for. So there are a few... Uh, there are some weapons in the group that are plus one weapons, or that are magic weapons. There's a vicious dagger. Um, there's a plus one short sword. Um, I think that may be it. All right. So I I can I am comfortable putting a wear rat at this level because I believe that very few of the PCs will have um, will have that. Uh, the ability to overcome his magic community or his weapon community. Oh, you know what? <laughs> right. So there's another thing I wanted to point out here with with Steel Fang. When you have a single creature that is going up against PCs, although this he has minions, but that so that's not really single. But uh, a common thing to do is to add um, to add uh, legendary actions, and I haven't done this here. Um, legendary actions I find problematic because if you it, it scales up to like maybe three, right? Okay. And then um, beyond three opponents, it's like, well, they, they, now then they, the action economy kicks in again. So unless you really scale, give them a lot of legendary actions for parties of six, it doesn't work. But you can use the reactive trait, right? Which is, which, is, which uh, according to the DMG, adds nothing to CR. Um, but uh, it gives this the the creature one reaction each turn, <laughs> and then you can add in a group of a set of reactions, and and that's going to perfectly scale with the PCs, right? However many PCs there are, he's going to get those reactions. So you know here he's got an attack reaction that will increase his CR at the rate I want it to. You know, he's going to start out as a CR uh, four, and then he's going to you know so by by with five PCs, he'll be a CR twelve. Right? Um, that's it. That should be one. Yeah, he's actually only increasing by one. I don't know why is it because he's a CR three to begin with. Yeah. Um, and so I, I'm actually going to go ahead and add in a uh, counter spell reaction. Uh, steel cast counter spell, and that would be probably charisma based. Um, 29, 29. Ooh. Yeah, that would, we're going to make it intelligence based. Um, uh, and 
we're going to go on up here and give him an int of 16. And plus three spell memory modifier. There we go. So now he have he'll have some protection from spells. He has the protection from weapon damage. Um, uh, we're also giving him some mobility, the, a shadow jaunt that allows him to, to teleport up to 20 feet into an area of dim light or to darkness or dim light. Um, all right, so there's one other thing I wanted to show here before moving on. Um, this Neolac Archer, what this is, is it's an implementation of the um, Arcane Archer from Unearthed Arcana. Um, I, <coughs> kind of a longitudinal process that I'm working on is I'm taking uh, all of the classes that have complete implementations without requiring the purchase of anything and I'm building creatures based upon those character classes, NPCs, uh, going from CR 0 to 20. So I've done the champion, which is out of the basic rules. I've done the thief out of the basic rules. I've done the mystic, uh, which was an unearth, uh arcana class. And let's see, I'm, I've done one more. What was the other one I've done? Uh, I thought I'd done one more. Maybe I'm working on a couple more, but I haven't actually done them yet. Um, Oh, it's in Dropbox. I don't know what's going on in Dropbox. So I've done Champion, Thief, Avatar. No, okay, I guess I have it. So, so, and now I'm working on Arcane Archer, which will be, which will be uh, my next uh, CR zero to twenty supplement. Will be an Arcane Archer from CR twenty. Then I'll do the Life Cleric. I'll do the. Um, I'm going to do both the War Master Wizard and the. Um, uh, uh, evoker because the evoker is in the basic rules and then lore master is in the um, unearth arcana unless a better one comes along something better than the than the, the lore master all right so uh, next up in the next video um, we're going to talk about uh, substituting something for this uh, for this uh, random encounter uh, and I will see you then.